This is Video Tips 171, Tubal Cain here again. And uh, this one again, I'm continuing the theme on lead hammers. Now back up and see those other uh, six be or seven before this on uh, how I made the permanent mold and so on. I don't always know who's watching this video, so that's why I repeat some of this. But uh, I showed you how to make it with a permanent mold. And now again, I repeat, not too many people can do that because there's just too much involved and if you just want a lead hammer to use and you don't want to go through all the fuss I'm going to show you two different methods here and uh, a quick corny joke uh, before uh, we begin well do you know how to tell if there's a small boy living in a house no that's when you have to wash the bar of soap before you use it yourself I told you it was corny all right what I've done here yesterday I've taken the original blue split pattern that I used in the other videos and I fashioned myself a core print now it looks like an extension of the pattern but this is a core print and a core print is a an impression in the sand that'll hold a core and in this case the core is going to be the half inch black pipe handle so how did I do this I bought a piece of 7 8 dowel at the Ace Hardware, which, by the way, cost like $4 for a four-footer. And you know, this wood now that they sell in uh, for dowels, it's not birch like it was back in the olden days. It's some kind of tropical soft wood. It's quite unsatisfactory, but that's what I'm using. So what I did is I took the full round dowel and I milled off half of it, and there was waste stock on the ends held in a V-block and I took it down to 7 16 thick here and I did that times two so I had two halves I made alignment pins and then on uh, the ends where it fastens on to the uh, the head I used a, a drum sander to give it a bit of a radius and then I epoxied it on there you know I took the paint off and the wax off so epoxy would adhere and I don't know how strong that is but I'm only gonna make one of these so I don't care and then on this end I've got pattern draft so that it'll lift out of the sand and I hope that this is uh, long enough for the handles that I'm going to use and right here it looks like it's well it's about right but the handles that I'm going to show you out in the garage are of various lengths now if I need it longer I'll either cut the handles off or I'll just dig a little more of the sand out near here at the end and uh, this is going to be a traditional sand mold as you have seen me make many many times for other projects but in this case I'm going to pour lead in here and the blue part will be lead again the, the bare wood here will be the the handle so let's go on out in the garage and uh, and do this and then when that whole job is done then we're gonna make it uh, with the tin can method so stick with me through this whole rather long video I am now out in my old garage at the molding bench. I had to move the 8N Ford tractor out of the way temporarily. And I think I'll take it for a little ride later. It's really a nice day. It's in May of 2014. And winter is finally over here. Okay, this is a 10 by 12 flask. And this pattern is just long enough to where I'm putting it in diagonal. but. A couple things for consideration here is that uh, I want to put a sprue and then a gate in and I want to go into the end so hopefully I got room uh, I, I could do it like this but I don't like being that close to the edge furthermore this is just a little bit longer I put the pipe cap on there and I may have to dig out on the end so I need that extra length down in this corner so that's why I'm putting a diagonal or use a bigger flask but then that thing is so heavy I can't lift it now I had two six foot pieces of uh, black pipe half inch diameter with threads on both ends forgot that I had it it was up on the top of a ladder here in the garage so I, I cut a 10 inch piece of that and uh, those actually were furniture clamps when I got them I took the clamps off because somebody had them either longer than what I needed so you know, I had that and, uh, for that other project. I went downtown and paid two bucks for a doggone uh, pipe nipple, and I, I had what I needed all the time here. But that's the problem when you got too much stuff. 
All right, I don't believe I'm going to show all of this because I have molded in so many of my other videos, but I'm going to put some parting compound on there, and then I'm going to sift the sand, ram it up, and then I'll show you when I have it flipped over, when I have that much done, which is about halfway through. I rammed up the bottom half, and yeah, I'm wearing my sissy gloves on my right hand. But, uh, you know... I this is actually uh, reversed here as far as the cope and the drag, but that's the way I like to do it. But uh, I hope that doesn't confuse you. But now I will assemble the pattern. Notice there's little holes in there that I've drilled to withdraw the pattern. Always do that ahead of time. It'll save you effort. Put that on there like that. little parting sand on the subject. Now I'm going to be running my sprue right here and then a gate over. Now if you can't remember where you're going to do that, be sure and mark it with chalk. Now I'll go ahead and sift that and ram it and uh, see you when I'm done with that. Got the second side rammed up and all of this time I have the furnace running over there melting the lead, so it's about halfway ready to go. So I'll take this apart. I've cut the sprue. Both have stayed down because of gravity. Sometimes that doesn't happen and you have to pull it out of the other half, but I'll deal with it. I'll lift this right off, this half. Lay that over there. Now I have to pull this one out. And I like to use a couple of drywall screws for that. Put one in there. And One in there, and it should lift right out. Wiggle it just a little bit. But before I do that, I think I'll cut that gate. Okay, and I don't care about this stuff here because remember this is a core print. Where's my bellows? Where's my bellows, he said. You don't want any loose sand in there because it'll wash into the cavity. When I go to put the handle in here now, I'm going to see if it's too long. Just a little too long, so I'm going to dig a little bit out here, but I have to do that on both halves. I just need a little extra length here is what I need. And that can be as crude as can be, that doesn't matter. I'm doing that on both halves. Gotta blow that out. The pipe cap, and I did tighten it with the pipe wrench. I didn't want it to get too close to the edge. You know, I'm not going to close it this time. What I'm going to do, I'm going over to the furnace here in just a second, and what I want to do is uh, heat up the end of this so that when the lead comes in, it doesn't hit 
coal steel and, and freeze off in a layer on me. So I'll take that over, I'm going to preheat that, and then when I get ready to pour, just a minute or two before I pour, I'll come over, put the handle in there, close the mold, and then she's ready to pour. So let's go over to the furnace. The pot is about three quarters full, and I've already melted uh, the heads off of several of these handles, and you can see that someone had crimped that. And this is a genuine cook handle here. And I still got uh, three here I can melt down. And now when I go to melt them, <coughs> all I'll do is stick them into the, uh, into the pot. And they melt quite fast that way. But the very first one that you melt takes a long time. And I will thoroughly scrape. Now again, wear your face shield, gloves, no water anywhere near this, no water in the mold because it'll turn to steam and explode. This can be hazardous. Do not let children do it. And I don't know, this is really what I should use, but I think I'll carry the whole pot over to the molding bench here. And one other thing I wanted to show you while we're here is that uh, I got five or six of these. These are uh, Babbitt. We talked about Babbitt a few minutes ago, and there's all different kinds of Babbitt. But this, these are older pieces, so there would be lead in there. But this is uh, real hard compared to... Can you hear it? Now, a piece of lead isn't going to ring like that. So there's a lot of tin, and there's antimony, and I don't know what in all in here. The NBD, that's probably the formula that... that uh, is in that bar. I think that's stuff fairly expensive now. Luckily I got a whole bunch of it. Not that I'll ever use it. But I like my lead hammers, not Babbitt. Okay. I'm going to heat this up now. And in order to do that, I'm just going to stick it right into the flame. Let it sit for about a minute. Right there. Take it over and put it into the mold. All right, metal is ready to go. I've skimmed the dross off. I'm, I'm going to hold a, a vice grips on there, and I've got it pinched. A genuine Peterson one from Nebraska, not one of the modern ones from China. And uh, carry the whole thing over. I've closed the mold. The uh, handle, again, is preheated, so uh, let's go over there and pour it. All right, I'm ready to pour. Let's see what happens here. Boy, that took a lot of lead. Let's see how much it shrinks now. And I'm going to wait about 15 minutes before I open that. Can't wait. Can you see it starting to shrink down a little bit? Hopefully that metal is feeding the hammerhead so I don't get a shrink spot in the hammerhead. It's time for the unveiling. Let's see what we got. It's been about 10 or 15 minutes. Looks pretty good, but let me take a, a brush and brush that off, and we'll have a good look at it. Before I go downstairs, I just melted uh, this lead hammer. You recall me showing that one to you. I put a magnet on. You remember then the other one? There was a magnet on it. So somebody made this, not me. Uh, it's kind of unusual. I don't know if there were just lead faces that went in there. 
I, I told you that the handle is welded on or if, uh, if there was a mold or, or just uh, w what the deal is on this but and I, I think I'll throw it away well, that's not even centered I don't like that you see what I mean by it's cockeyed but I think somebody probably had a good idea but it's not something I want so all right let's go down to the basement and, and look at the uh, finished one and this video is running much longer it might even have to be broken into two parts I hope not because uh, okay here it is I cooled it off in water I couldn't wait looks quite good I'm going to saw this off with a hand hacksaw real quick and then we'll look at it again. Okay, I'm happy. Surface finish doesn't matter there because we're going to pound on that. And even this, I might sand that off a little bit on the big belt sander, but if I just pound it on that, it wouldn't matter either, would it? And if the flashing bugs you, take a good coarse file. You know, they used to make files especially for lead. File that off. You know what you see right here? I think that's a little bit of a corner of that pipe cap sticking out. And a little bit of the thread. Very little leaked out here. So you understand now what I meant by a core print. Two different versions. Okay, now we're going to start on the third one, the third method. There'd be many other methods too that you might concoct or come up with, but these are my methods. Alright, this is the third method, the so-called tin can method. I asked my wife what is sold in the grocery store in a steel can, I don't want aluminum, I want steel, that's approximately the size of this and I showed it to her and she says, oh, well there's several things and uh, so she said uh, tomato paste so I went to Aldi's you know and those Germans get it right too you know and it's the happy harvest but I was just wondering if the, the people that harvested this were happy out in the field with their stoop labor I doubt it but that was only 39 cents a can so I came at, came home and the most difficult part of the whole thing was I could not get the lid off. My wife's got three different can openers. One I couldn't figure out. The other two wouldn't pierce it. You know, my mom had a daisy hanging from the wall all during our childhood, and it worked perfectly every time. This was a nightmare. Finally, I had to have my wife finish it off. So here's the idea here. And you can use any can size you want. If you want a big hammer the size of a soup can, make... You know, get yourself a can of soup or, or whatever but this is an all steel can and that's a little bit bigger than this actually so that's I suppose going to be about a three pound hammer but you need to put a big hole in there and the purpose of the hole of course is for the handle well how are you going to put that hole in there well I'm using a chassis punch or a, a knockout punch Greenlee brand uh, you probably won't have one uh, a hole saw is not going to work, a drill bit is not going to work, but you could dr drill a pilot hole and cut it out with the tiny little snips. Get it fairly close and that'll work. But here's how I did it. I lost just a little bit of the footage on doing this hole here, so let me show you on another can. Be sure and use one of these for your pilot hole up to the 3 8 mark because they don't grab. I love those unibits, Christmas tree bits. They're, they are awesome. But the uh, chassis punch is assembled on each side and just using a wrench, this is very thin tin plate. It doesn't take much. Oop, just a little more. Then the punch out looks like this. Now I hope that uh, the plastic lining in here doesn't affect this. If it does, I'll have to burn that out. And that will be poured just like this. With sand packed around it so that the metal doesn't leak out of that hole. Which is just slightly oversized, but not much. Let's go outside and cast one of those. 
I'm back outside in the foundry. Okay, this type of handle with the crimped end is not going to fit in there, obviously. So I can use the threaded type thing with the conduit nuts or with the cap. But I don't have one of those caps without going down to the hardware store. So I'm going to use this cook handle, which I've been wanting to use anyway. So that'll go in there just like this. And i got to make sure that i got it in there straight in both directions. And I'm going to pack sand around it. So I'll show you that in about two seconds here. Perhaps you can understand what I'm doing here, but I've got the tin can with the cook hammer handle stuck into it. And I'm going to pack it around here so it doesn't leak. And also I'm going to use the sand to help me level and support the handle. Now it could be done in other ways. You can make a fixture and all, all different possibilities. But since this is just one of, that's how I'm going to do it. So it'll take me just a second to pack that and level it and, and get it just the way I want it. I think I got the sand all packed and leveled and uh, the handle level so it won't leak and won't move. This uh, pot that I'm using is most awkward. There's no pouring lip on it and it's not really made uh, to, to pour out of but I don't want to bump this when I do that and I don't want to fill it quite to the lid uh, to the brim because um, I located the uh, the hole just slightly below so there'd be some to trim off because the top of it is probably going to be irregular and uh, and uh, full of dross or a little bit of dross or something unsightly not that it would matter but possibly unsightly so uh, I'm all ready to pour I think and the metal is about ready to go I'm ready to pour I'm coming hold your shirt on I think that's about how high I want it and I don't, hope I don't get a big shrink hole right there at the top. Now that's a pretty good blob of uh, metal there. It's going to take a while to cool. And uh, the plastic did not seem to bother, the plastic lining. And I did not preheat the handle as I knew that the mass of lead was sufficient enough to do that for me without causing a problem. So in about 10 minutes we'll take a look at this and of course we have to peel the can off of it. Which will be the most dangerous part of the job by the way. I'm back in the basement and uh, Tubal Cain Jr. has just joined me. Say hi Jordan. Hi. Okay. <laughs> well this is still a little bit warm but uh, Tubal Cain Jr. put it in the bird bath, you know, I hope they don't mind, but they'll have a warm bath if, when, the, uh, when the birds come a little later today, won't they, Jordan? Yeah. And uh, I think the birds like a, a nice warm bath. Okay, yeah, th there it is, yeah. folks. Now, I just weighed this on the baby scale over there. It's exactly five pounds with the steel handle. But now we got to get that can off of there. Well, years ago in the high school, when I was in my, you know... Prime. Yeah, thank you. And uh, what we would do is we would line up a, a dozen cans on the floor of different sizes and pour every one about half full of aluminum. And those were just perfect uh, raw material slugs to make pulleys and gears and other things that we did in the machine shop. And then we would peel the cans off. But I tell you, I think the kids uh, bled more doing that than uh, anything I can think of. But uh, I'm going to slit this ever so uh, shallow with the... Uh, Ryobi cutoff wheel. So I'm going to put that in the vise and do that lengthwise and then it should be ready to uh, peel off. Maybe I should even do both sides. And I, I don't even care if I go just a little bit into the lead. It won't hurt a thing. Okay. I slit both sides. Now I'm going to put it in the vise, take two pliers and pull it off. Okay. That's what it looks like when I take it off. The tubal cane is very disappointed. We got craters and pock marks like the moon all over. Look at the finish, it's absolutely awful. And 
although it would be 100% functional, what I don't like is the, is the appearance of it, and I believe that it might because be because of that plastic lining that I talked about and I didn't do anything about it. So I am going to make another one. I'm going to melt this one back down. I'm going to make another one and I am going to uh, burn that off. Now if you look down here and you see one portion of it that is gone but I should have known better but okay I'm going to do that tomorrow because I'm worn out for today. It looks like a moon hammer instead of a lead hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, it would be functional, but it is unsightly, and I am ashamed of it. I want to do this over again now. So I've taken the other can, and I heated it up with propane and smoked it off real good, and then uh, wiped the inside, and I want to repeat the process and see if it's successful this time, because to me this is unacceptable. I had a friend whose face looked like this after he had acne. Perfection at last. So I poured that one off camera because everything uh, about this one was the same as the other except that I torched all of the uh, uh, plastic from the inside of this can. Now I should have known that because that's a lesson I learned in 1967 when I started teaching that we had to smoke all those cans first smoke I mean with a torch and and burn the plastic off so this this one now the tomato can one it's a five pounder ready to go I'll knock that rather sharp edge off there with a file because it's uh, like that now, that's gonna be a nice hammer now remember I don't sell these somebody uh, keeps asking me how much for one of those well I don't sell them uh, but let's review now and Remember, go to my website. I'll put the uh, the link on the screen now. And uh, for $19.95 a month, you get my two lathe courses and whatever else is on there, small small uh, steam engines and so on. There's no tricks here. You know, after a month, you can resign. And, uh, you know, that's the pack of two, uh, cost a pack of two cigarettes. So let's review now. This is the one I made from the permanent mold. This is the one I made with a sand mold, using this as the pattern. And finally, this is the tin can method. And this is the one that is most likely for you to be able to do at home. Because it doesn't really require any special equipment, and you can even melt the lead on the kitchen stove, although I don't recommend it. And you can use half inch pipe for your handles. Okay, again, a long video. I hope this was helpful. And this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.